Lou Holtz has put the Notre Dame victory march on hold because today the Irish begin their final dash for another perfect season. They've run their win streak to 22 straight, and now the ultimate prize is once again within sight. The mission is clear. Notre Dame must sack Penn State, Miami, and Colorado to celebrate a second straight national championship. Paterno can almost taste an upset. His Nittany Lions have been numbed in 89, especially in recent weeks, but nothing could satisfy them more than tripping the mighty Irish. At Happy Valley, they are not running scared. They are ready to challenge the nation's number one ranked team. Today, two of college football's giants are going to collide. Notre Dame and Penn State next. are bundled up. Temperature at 30 degrees, but the wind chill factor makes it feel like 6 degrees. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome on this wintry afternoon to State College. In the 80s, this place has presented an enormous obstacle to the Irish. In the decade, Notre Dame has played at Beaver Stadium four times. Four times Notre Dame has lost. The most recent, 1987. In the final seconds, the Irish went for the win with a two-point try. And the quarterback is Tony Rice. Brown in the slot. They've got him double covered now. Karpinski comes in. Here's the rollout. No way. No. Pete Kirkendall. Vern Lundquist made the call that day for us here on CBS as Penn State prevailed 21-20. It was a day weather-wise very similar to today. In fact, there are other similarities. And for more on that, let's take you down to our sideline man, John Dockery. Jim Nance, it is wicked cold. It is bone-chilling cold down here. And it's not snowing now, but earlier this morning, a snowstorm blew across Happy Valley, leaving a dusting of the white stuff all over the place. Now, there's more forecast later on in the day. Right now, as you mentioned, Jim Nance, the temperature is around 30. The wind chill is heading down towards zero, but the real story is the wind. It's gusting up to 25 miles an hour and sure both these teams are used to the cold and they rely on the run so it may not affect their offenses that much but where it will affect this game is in the kicking game mistakes and field position will help decide this game and pat hayden it's the way the players and the teams deal with the elements that will help to determine who wins this game today well john in uh, many stadiums across the country thousands of senior college football players will be running into the stadium for the last home game here at Penn State, they have a tradition of introducing their seniors before their last home game. And in a few moments, these are reflective moments, thinking about how important this game is to these players. I think it's the biggest game for Penn State in the last five years other than the national championship. Especially, I think, the way this season has gone, the way things have happened to us. This is our national championship game this week. This is my national championship game. This is everybody's game. There's no pressure on us. There's... Uh, we have nothing. We have everything to gain. Notre Dame has everything to lose. And for Blair Thomas, is a very special day as he runs out in the field for the last time. The man who's rushed for over a thousand yards this year sat out all last year with a uh, knee injury, but he had over 200 yards when they last played against Notre Dame two years ago. He needs to have that kind of game today. So Greg Gumble, as Blair Thomas and his teammates run into Beaver Stadium for the very last time. They hope they have the kind of game that they can remember for a lifetime. All right, Pat Hayden, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our studios in New York. Season 22-game win streak, the longest in Notre Dame history. Challenged today by 17th-ranked Penn State, the Nittany Lions at 6-2-1, and, and the Irish leave the locker room and head for the field where they are winless in the 80s at Beaver Stadium. Let's get a report now from John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, the big question all week long here at Penn State is, who will the starting quarterback be? Will it be Tom Bill, the cerebral, high percentage passer, or Tony Sacker, the man with unlimited potential? No amount of detective work has been able to come up with a clue. But joining me now is a man who can solve the mystery of the starting quarterback, Joe Paterno, who would be? Joe's still very tight-lipped and mum on the subject. If I had to guess, I'd say it would be Tony Saka. 
He sure is smiling for a man with no sweater on in this 30-degree weather. We'll see the real Joe Paterno in a minute. But now the Notre Dame Fighting Irish coming out. Let's get another report down there. Pat Hayden. Jim, I'll tell you, the wind is going to be very much a factor today, particularly for the kickers and punters. I talked to Craig Hendrick, the punter from Notre Dame, just a moment ago, and he said when he's punting the ball into the wind, he's going to have to keep the ball low and try to drive it. And Tony Rice, the quarterback, said when he throws the ball into the wind, he needs a very tight spiral to pierce the wind today. Penn State Nittany Lions at 6-2-1. and one. A one-point loss three weeks ago to Alabama. Missing a last-second field goal for the win. Today, the power drive for Notre Dame begins. Penn State this afternoon at Miami next week. And then on to the Orange Bowl again, where they'll face Colorado. Penn State would like nothing more than to spoil all the plans of the number one Irish. before but he was the coach at that time of North Carolina State he has not won here as the Notre Dame coach and now Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions these two have met 13 times the set series record is six, six, and one. Today, the deadlock will be broken. Notre Dame and Penn State coming up next. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Beaver Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania, it's the top-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish versus the Penn State Nittany Lions. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. UPS, past efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. And by RCA, number one with the toughest critics in the world. Played. Penn State was a little delayed coming out of the Notre Dame was a little delayed coming out of the locker room. Then during a coin toss, look at this. The entire Notre Dame team lined up behind their captains. A type of intimidation saying, here we are. We're in your house, Jim Nance, but we're ready. Back to you, Jim Nance. Doc, Penn State won the toss and deferred. They will defend the goal to our left. Notre Dame will receive to start it. And that means the Rocket. Will they kick it to him? He leads the nation in kick returns, having run two back for touchdowns, both against Michigan. Four on his career he has returned for touchdowns, as well as a punt return this year. straddled the sideline and a touchback Notre Dame will start from the 20 Tony Rice the leading rusher for the Irish at quarterback in the backfield he's joined by Anthony Johnson who has scored 12 touchdowns Ricky Waters has scored nine on the year Eilers and Ismail are the receivers Andre Collins. Well, I have 
have seen Tony Rice do this so often over the years. It looks like there's a little bit of a mix-up, and he runs almost like a quarterback draw off a of trap action. And then he's going to pick up a block by number 13, Eilers, and Ismail, number 25. The one thing about Notre Dame, their wide receivers block, and block all day long. Great block by Eilers to help free him. First and 10, Notre Dame from the 44. Ricky Waters off right tackle. Stacked up after a three-yard gain. Tackled by Collins and Dieter. Dieter is the nose tackle. A couple of seniors on that defensive line. Gianetti and Schoenwolf. Chismar and Andre Collins, two outstanding senior linebackers on the inside. On the outside, it's D'Onofrio and freshman Reggie Gibbons. They'll give Waters four on the carry. Second down and six for Notre Dame. William Pollard has come into the game as a receiver for the Irish. Pitch to Waters. No gain. D'Onofrio ran down the line with him. The Notre Dame offensive line starts at center with Mike Helt. And at guard, Ryan and Grunhard, the two Tims. The tackles, Mike Brennan and Dean Brown. Another Brown at tight end, Derek Brown. Always a threat to go deep. The tight end, Derek Brown. Third and six out of the eye, Notre Dame. Sean Wolf makes the sack on Rice. Notre Dame throws that often. 112 attempts this year for Rice, but only the third time he's been sacked. O.J. McDuffie, return man, waiting for the kick from Hendrick. Bouncing around and will die near the 20-yard line. You know, Rich Stonewolf, Jim, has made an awful lot of plays in his four-year career at Penn State. Number 75, just as a swim move right behind Grunhard, number 75, went right over his head and made the sack. And, Jim, this is going to be a defensive game and a game decided by field position and turnovers. And I think it's going to be a fourth-quarter game. Well, there's the answer to the starting quarterback question at Penn State. Saka, the sophomore will remain the starter. He sends Smith in motion on first down. Blair Thomas tries it up the middle and picks up three. Saka starts today, completes only 39% of his passes, but he's got a big arm, can go long. Thompson and Blair Thomas, the running backs, Thomas already over 1,000. David Daniels and Terry Smith, the receivers. We'll also see O.J. McDuffie in the mix for the Nittany Lions at a receiver spot. Second down, we'll call it eight. Now, Saka complete in the hands of Dave Jacob. Well, Jim, you will see actually both quarterbacks today. That is Tony Saka, the man who has played most of this year, but Tom Bill is the man who started the season, started the first two games of the season, and then was suspended from the team. But Tony Saka is a man who's come in and played well. Number 12, you will see him back. Last week, he played the second half against Maryland. It was a 13-13 tie last week against the Terrapins. Third down and eight. Pass caught. What a hit put on Dave Daniels by Ned Bolkar. Right at the first down yardage at the 31-yard line. Daniels held on. And this is Ned Bolkar's kind of game, number 47 in the middle of the screen. When you play Michigans and Michigan States and Southern Cows and Penn State, Ned Bolkar is in his element because they're going to throw passes like that. They're going to run the ball at him 40 or 50 times. He loves these kind of games. Boy, that's the kind of hit that shakes and rattles the teeth on a cold day like it is today in State College. It is a first down for Penn State from its 31-yard line. 
of the full house backfield. Nick Duffy gets the run, picks up five. Don Grimm cut him under for Notre Dame. Now let's talk more about the Irish defense. It starts at nose tackle with Chris Zorich. I don't think there's a better one in the country. Bob Dahl and Jeff Alm on the defensive line. The backers, Grimm and Bolkar inside and outside it's Andre Jones and Scott Kowalkowski. Second down and five for Penn State. Pitch to Thomas. Zott out in front. First down Penn State. Andre Jones holds on to him as Thomas goes out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Very nice offensive line here for Penn State. Roger Duffy the best that Joe Paterno has ever had at center. Monahan and Zott at the, at the guard. Zott a very good pulling guard and Freeman and McCartan at the tackles. The tight end Jay, Dave Jacob needs to catch some balls today and Penn State needs to have some success throwing the ball downfield. First and ten Penn State from its 45. Quickly now Saka hits Daniels again. A quickie route that gets into Notre Dame territory and another first down, a gain of 11. And Jim, I can't tell you how important this start is for Tony Saka. He is a quarterback struggling with his confidence. He acts very confident, but deep down he has been troubled the last few weeks. But he's come out this game and thrown some very nice balls. Two receptions by Dave Daniels. And on first and 10, Leroy Thompson hit at the line by Chris Zorich. You, know, you mentioned Zorich being the best you have seen. I don't think there's a better nose guard in all of America because what Chris Zorich does for this team is just about everything. He'll fight off the center. He'll run downfield on screen plays. He'll fight off double teams. He'll make sacks. He does everything that's possibly asked of a nose tackle. Only a junior from Chicago, Zorich. Second and 10. Running out of there and getting to the 36-yard line. Zorich holding on. Got him by an ankle along with Andre Jones. And Penn State about three yards shy of a first. And Jim, Penn State has the ball, has the ball in the wind right now. We've talked about the wind a couple of times, and it's very important when you have the wind at your back to try to make the quarter as long as you can. And that means throwing the ball with the wind. They brought in an extra tight end, number 80, Todd Young. Third and three. Play action fake. Saka with all kinds of protection. Now thrown it downfield, and the catch is made by McDuffie. adjustment by O.J. McDuffie. First and ten. Blair Thomas pushes his offensive lineman in front and knocks down a couple of guys. It was McCartan. <laughs> he was directed traffic out there a little bit. It helped out, didn't it? Yeah. Cleared the way. Now the Notre Dame secondary with eight interceptions on the year. Stan Smagala, the other corner, and the safeties are Carroll and Francisco. Well, this has been a sluggish Penn State offense all year, but this opening drive, they have been very impressive mixing the run and the pass. Second and four, Jarek in at fullback. There, Thomas to the three and a first down for Penn State. Clearing the way for him, the fullback, but it was just inserted. John Jarrett. You know, an offense last week against Maryland, they got down in scoring territory inside the 10-yard line and had trouble punching the ball in. But you sense there's a different attitude. You 
sense those seniors that were introduced before this game are carrying the emotion on their sleeves and want very much to get this ball into the end zone. First and goal. Collins in there now. Out in motion. Saka keeps and gets to the one-yard line. Brian Flannery on the tackle for Notre Dame. We said Ned Bokar, this was, he's in his element today. Number 47, right there in the middle of your screen. His eyes see the play taken into his right. He is sacrificing his body. He knows a national championship, perhaps, is on the line. Great play by Bokar. Second and goal from the one. Right into the end zone where the frenzied student fans are sitting. puts together a 13-play, 79-yard drive to start it off. First time they touch the football. They use over five minutes on the clock. And Tarassi, out of Markowitz's hold, and it's 7-0 Penn State. And give this touchdown to the offensive line, Jim. Watch how they come off and create a crease. There's white bodies on the ground. See all the Notre Dame defenders on their hands and knees. And then Blair Thomas keeps his head down, and Penn State is off to an early 7-0 lead. Two years ago, rushed for 214 yards in a victory against Notre Dame. Just three weeks later, while practicing, he said some, somebody, it made a noise like somebody had cracked some knuckles. His knee had been blown out. He had to miss the entire 88 season. He bypassed a chance to go into the NFL to come back for this year. And today, he has given Penn State the early advantage over the Irish. 24 yards on the drive and the touchdown for Blair Thomas. Joe Paterno says he is not courageous enough to kick the ball to Ismail today. Unless he kicks it short. Well, there's Ismail from the 14. And to the 35-yard line. Watch number 57, the guard, Sean Love for Penn State. He is a man who's going to play a lot today in place of Ed Monahan. And he is the one who really cleared the way, bounced off number seven, Andre Jones, and then got another guy. It was a second effort by the offensive guard. You know, you always talk about second effort of tailbacks. That time he had the second effort of Sean Love, the guard. Out of the wishbone, first and ten, Notre Dame. Good tackle made as he was cut under. As we go back now to New York for an update. Jim, Oklahoma, Nebraska doesn't mean as much as it usually does this year, but an intense rivalry nevertheless. Jerry Godowski has run for one touchdown, thrown for two, including that 24-yarder to Chris Garrett. And in the first quarter, Nebraska leads the Sooners 22 to seven. Jim? Well, on a day where that great rivalry does not have Anything riding on it, like it usually does. Anthony Johnson past the 40 to the 41-yard line. Well, Anthony Johnson all year long and throughout his whole career has gotten more yards out of nothing than just about any running back I've ever seen. You know, the, there's, there's, he has to get those dirty yards, the tough yards inside. And as a fullback, he averages over four yards a carry. And Anthony Johnson, by his inside running, sets up the outside runs on the perimeter for Tony Rice. Third down and four. Ricky Waters near the first down at the 45. He got it. The spot gave him the first down. I'll tell you, that was an important first down, too, I think, Jim, for... Notre Dame. 
Now Colorado, as expected, all over Kansas State today. And that's the reason why Oklahoma and Nebraska is not as special as it often is. Well, it's not for the Big 8 crown, but for the, again, for those seniors playing in those, that game today, it's a very special moment for those guys as well. Tony Smith in as a receiver for Tony Rice. First and 10. From the 45. Inside give to Anthony Johnson. Now, what Notre Dame will do, Jim, is they will continue to run Anthony Johnson inside until you take him away. But what that does is set up Tony Rice on the perimeter. And all the big plays in college football come on the perimeter of the defense. And sooner or later, Tony Rice will be at the end of the defense with Rocket Ismail on his corner, on his side. That was a great hit we saw early in this game by Ned Bolkar. I still think the hardest hit this year in college football is the one leveled on Anthony Johnson against Michigan State. He was back on his feet a play later. Rice on the option. Gets to the 49-yard line. Andre Commons tripped him up first. And Sherrod Range was there also, the free safety number 32nd, uh, 36. And every time you play an option team, your free safety has to have the game of his life. And if Penn State is going to knock off this number one team, Sherrod Range at free safety is going to have to make a lot of tackles and still be cagey enough not to give up any cheap touchdowns on the post patterns. Third down and four. Pollard to the right. Ismail in a slot right. Rice throwing to Waters. And it's a first down. Just enough yardage. Reggie Givens on the coverage and tackle. Rice's pass caught. His first attempt of the day. You know, much has been made. You're going to see Waters come right out here into the flat. Much has been made about Tony Rice and his ability not to throw the ball terribly effectively. But I want to say on third downs, and when the game is on the line, he can throw the ball well. That guy was open, and that was Ricky Waters in the flat for the easy first down. Into the win. First and 10 from the 44 of Penn State. Now the option and the keep. 27-yard line. Tony Rice tackled by Sherrod Range after a gain of 17. Okay. Running the option plays is one of the funniest things to see, I think, because defensive players run away from the guy with the ball. You're going to see number 27, Gary Brown, run right past the quarterback with the ball. But he has the pitch man. That's his responsibility. I've always thought it was a strange sight not running past the guy with the ball, but the option forces you to play disciplined defense. That's already twice in this quarter. Rice has broken a couple of long ones. First and ten. And a timeout called by Rice. In some state leads the nation in scoring defense. Mark D'Onofrio is one of their best, but he knows the Irish have many ingredients. But Tony Rice makes he's the key to the offense, makes the whole offense go, and I'm very impressed also with uh, with their fullback, Anthony Johnson. He seems like every time he hits someone, he's getting right up looking to hit the next guy. So you know, all around, they have, of course, Ismail and Waters. I mean, with speed, I mean, they're just a great team all around. There's not a, you know, a soft spot in there. This guy, Mark D'Onofrio, has made two tackles. 11 sacks on the year for D'Onofrio. Why the timeout by Rice? Two seconds left on the down clock. He was trying to call an audible at the line of scrimmage. Realized he would have run out of time. First and 10, Notre Dame. And Anthony Johnson barrels to the 23-yard line. Dieter and Givens on the tackle. Let's go back to John Dockery. You know, Jim Nance, we talked about the wind before the game and the weather conditions. It's very cold down here. The field was covered before the game, so it's not frozen. It may freeze up later, but the wind is very strange. It's gusting. At this moment, it's blowing across the field, so it's hard to say where the advantage is at this moment in time. Back to you guys. Second and six, Eilers to the right, Ismail in a slot right. Out of the eye, option left, and Rice to the 6-17 yard line. Chismar in range on the tackle. 
Brian Chismar is a much like Ned Bolkar. We talked about Bolkar, but Chismar, number 28, the inside linebacker for Penn State, is the same type of player. And you know, college football is about making adjustments. Well, he's had to make a lot of them. He is right here. Watch, you're gonna see him make the play and fight through a couple of guys, shifting down, never crosses his legs. Fights through one block of Anthony Johnson and makes the stop. We talk about making adjustments, though. He, came, he was recruited as a as a running back. Then he was a starting strong safety. They moved him to an outside linebacker. And now he is an inside linebacker and has really found a home inside. Brian Chismar. You mentioned he came here as a running back. Tenth all-time rusher in the high school ranks in the state of Pennsylvania. But here he's played defense throughout his career. We're going to measure for the first down. Just to be sure. And uh, about a foot short. Third and one. And this is where Notre Dame has been so good this year on short yardage situations. By the nature of their offense, they're going to be in a lot of third and shorts. And when they get in that wishbone and option formation, they have four different guys who can pick up the first down for you. They bring in Rod West, number 43, as the extra tight end. Ismail is in the backfield in this wishbone set with Anthony Johnson and Ricky Waters. On the sneak, Rice has it. First down, Notre Dame. And what about the block of Mike Hilt? When you're a defensive man, you know the ball's going to come right over you. But watch the center, Mike Hilt, number 55, on Jim Dieter, number 72. They lock helmets. He gets low. There's a big push. And Tony Rice just follows the big block and the big body of Hilt for the first yard, for the first down. That is a nice charge by the center. From the 16, Eilers at the top of your screen. Ismail in a slot. Inside again they go with man, man. Anthony Johnson. Jim Dieter on that play, Pat. And a great matchup. Dieter the nose tackle, number 72 in the middle, and Held. These guys are going to go at it all day long. The play before, Held got the better of it. This time, Dieter fights off the block. Thinks he stops Anthony Johnson right there, but Anthony Johnson went for five more yards. Twelfth play of the drive for the Irish. Second down and three. Anthony Johnson man, man. driving his legs to the four-yard line and a Notre Dame first down. Well, you, what you should really look at when you watch Anthony Johnson play this game is how many yards he gains after he gets hit. Watch, he's going to get hit by a couple of... Andre Collins does a nice job of getting around the block. And then you see how low he is? He's hard to stop for no game because he runs so low and keeps his legs moving all the time. The football's inside of the five. First and goal. Tony Rice. Touchdown, Notre Dame. first quarter. Kick is good. Jim, we talked about Anthony Johnson as a runner, but watch him at the fullback position throw the key block here. Again, he gets low and clears the way for Tony Rice to dive into the end zone. Notre Dame comes back to tie the game. 7-7. Irish riding in on a 22-game win streak. And here's how they have done it. A lot of ways. 
I think. I, I think that one is one of the key ones. The forced 26 more turnovers than they committed. And then look at the special teams. Lou Holtz put as much puts as much emphasis on the special teams as any head coach in America. That's the first thing they do every week is set up their special teams game plan. Looks like they're in a battle today. However, Bobby Samuels is set at the 10-yard line to return the kick. And Ball Henrik just yeah. flat out missed it. Yeah. Ball blew off the tee. As long as he doesn't touch it, he can do that. I think we just got about 30,000 cases of whiplash. Everyone jolted their head to the left and <laughs> looking for the football. Like a tennis match, <laughs> yeah. Well, now they're going to have someone hold it. Yeah, that's, that exactly explains the reason why and also why Samuels is on the 10-yard line. Just driving it into the ground. And the return to the 43-yard line by Jeff Anderson, the son of Rutgers head coach Dick Anderson. Jim, you have to think with 2.14 remaining in the first quarter and Penn State have, having the win behind him, maybe you think about using your timeouts here rather than at the end of the second quarter and try to gain as much of the time and clock as you can with the wind at your back. 2.14 left in the first quarter. Number 32, Blair Thomas, lined up behind Tony Saka. First down carry for Thomas. And he darts to the 48-yard line. Devon McDonald on that side, along with Todd Light. But Blair Thomas has such a, a great feel of where people are on the field. And not just not just defensive players. He has a real sense of where all his teammates are, and he can pick up blocks a lot of guys can't because of that feel for the game. Second and six. Saka passes deflected, but still caught. Bob Dahl got a hand on it, but the pass was caught. Well, more and more teams we have seen in college football this year tipping balls because more and more teams have short passing attacks and you can't sack the quarterback if they throw, have uh, short drops. But Notre Dame this time it's Bob Dahl, number 93, who gets his hands up there. We have seen Jeff Holm tip balls for Notre Dame. Zorich has as well. But if you can't get to the quarterback, get those big paws up. Blair Thomas on the catch, third and one from the 48 of Notre Dame. Blair Thomas again, looking for the corner, looking for the marker. He has it. And a first down for Penn State. Well, you know, you think of Blair Thomas as a, fast, a flashy running back that can get you 40 yards. Well, that's a tough yard that you need for a first down to keep a drive alive against the number one team. That's a big run. But, Jim, I'm still a little bit surprised that we aren't seeing more passes from Penn State right now when they have this big win to their backs. Well, they'll have the win for one more minute. On first down, setting up the reverse for McDuffie. Now looking to throw. No one open downfield, so McDuffie runs with it. And gets to the 31-yard line. Got away from Bullcar. And McDuffie able to improvise and pick up another first down, a gain of 15. Ned Bolcar was a funny thing. The inside linebacker got his shoe and was so disgusted because he ran right out of it and then just threw it down. But Bolcar is right about in the middle of the screen right now. McDuffie's trying to throw the ball downfield, but Spagala was not fooled. But watch Bolcar. He picked it up and then he threw the shoe down. Disgusted, he ran right through it. First and 10, Penn State. Larry Thomas on the short side of the field. Out of bounds at the 26. A lot of people thought it was a late hit after Blair Thomas was out of bounds. All of a sudden, you have 85,000 referees. But no call. Was there, there was a call. There was yeah. a flag. We're a bit blocked out by the sidelines here, down below on our near side. Uh, they called the late hit on Terrell. I'm not so sure it was as aggravating as they believe. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, defense, first time. It wasn't a hard hit, but it was a hit when Thomas was out of bounds. And Lou, Lou Holtz wants to talk about it with Pat Terrell. 
He takes Terrell out, brings in George Foreman at free safety. But it's first and ten for Penn State. Jarek in at fullback. Thomas, the tailback, gets the carry and maybe a yard. That will be the last play of this quarter. Penn State has driven it for a touchdown. Notre Dame came back to answer. So it's 7-7. Notre Dame and Penn State. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station. Score tied at 7. Penn State threatening. Now you see some sunshine coming across the field, but folks, it is wicked cold here. The wind chill is approaching zero. Temperature just dipped below 30 degrees, but the real factor is the wind. It's gusting up to 30 miles an hour, affecting both teams. Now back to you, Pat and Jim. All right, Doc. And we start the second quarter with Penn State driving again. They have it second and nine from the Notre Dame 13-yard line. Leroy Thompson hit right at the line. Tackled by Troy Ridgely. Third and long coming up. You know, Leroy Thompson, number 44, the man who ran that ball, Jim, is really a converted tailback. And they really wanted to play and see a lot more of John Jarek, number 34, at fullback because he was the kind of powerful fullback you need to play against Notre Dame. Third and nine. Saka. Tucks it in. Takes the sack. Devon McDonald. Yeah, and that is a big sack when Tarasi now has to kick against the win. Number 45, the left of your screen. The best pass rusher at Notre Dame, and it's all attitude. That's all pass rushing is, and he's got a rusher's attitude. Ray Tarasi will attempt a field goal measuring 38 yards. This to put Penn State in front. Kind of a low snap fielded by Markowitz, and the kick is good. Tarassi now 16 of 20 on the year. Penn State's offense has had the football twice. They've scored on each possession and now lead by three. Penn State back in front, 10-7 over Notre Dame. But the Irish now will have the wind at their backs here for the first time today. The Rocket about to return the kick. Today is Ragib Ismail's 20th birthday. He is the most exciting man in college football this season, has been. As a kick returner, as a receiver, and sometimes even as a running back. Tarassi kicks it instead on a wing to Anthony Johnson. Johnson, <laughs> look at this. Wow. All the way to the 40-yard line. Notre Dame seems to always start with excellent field position. And tomorrow we position our day starting at 12.30 with the NFL today. And then regional coverage. Many will see Minnesota against Philadelphia. Tampa Bay and Chicago. Saints, Atlanta, Detroit. Phoenix against the Rams. Green Bay, San Francisco. Those are 4 o'clock games you see there. Check your local listings. Looking forward to see that Viking defense. Keith Lamar, 15 sacks on the year. It's incredible the year Millard's having. Culver, the fullback, in front on the option, helping clear the way for Rice. He steps out at the 41-yard line of Penn State. Yeah, part of that was the block by Rodney Culver, the fullback, and the rest of it was Tony Rice. We saw earlier Anthony Johnson do it. Watch the fullback right here. This is Rodney Culver, number five. Watch the block that he gets after the fake. He's the one that really clears the inside. He blocks 31 Andre Collins, and that creates a huge lane for Rice. He makes a guy miss, and that's a good combination of block and run by the Irish. 17-yard gain in Rice now. Eight carries for 62 yards. And the Notre Dame touchdown. Ricky Waters sidesteps a defender, has a first down, and he burst his way all the way to the 22-yard line. Now, I was 
talking to Jim Strong, the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, and he said, we have challenged Ricky Waters in the final part of the season. We want him to be our physical bat block. And he follows the block on the left side there by number 64, Mike Brennan, who comes around on Sean Wolf, number 75. The fullback kicks out, that's Johnson. And then Ricky Waters just runs right through the arm tackle. He gained 19 on that play. Another first down from the 22. Inside, handoff, Anthony Johnson. And a gain of four. Givens on the tackle. Boy, Mike Held is getting some help from the guard, number 52, Tim Ryan, as they double-team Jim Dieter. One goes low, the other goes high. But it's co great coordination. Look at that. They blocked max six yards. One goes low, one goes high, and then Anthony Johnson just hugs that double-team. Second and six. timeout called by Rice as again the down clock was about to expire Irish left with one timeout in the first half and trail by three up clear the way for Tony Rice 62 yards rushing here early he's in the race for the Heisman as well oh that means everything because uh it's more of a team award and I don't think Tony could get it by himself so to speak without the rest of the team and just knowing that Tony and he cares about us and he's told every all of us that, you know, he cares about us and that if he wanted it'd just be the best because, you know, we feel like we're helping him do it and uh, he respects us. One thing everyone always mentions about Tony Rice, he saves his best for the big games. And he's off to a big start. Second down and six from the Penn State 18. Baking quickly and keeping, and Rice near the first down. I believe he has it at the 12-yard line. We're early in the second quarter at Beaver Stadium. Notre Dame ranked number one in the country. In for a fight today against 17th-ranked Penn State. The Nittany Lions, a touchdown and a field goal on their two possessions today. And the Irish now driving and trying to regain, take over the lead. And it's been a day thus far, Jim, of linemen and defensive play and offensive linemen and nose tackles. And that's the kind of day it's going to be all day. It's going to be a fourth quarter game. Lou Holtz sending in a play with Rod West, the backup tight end. You see Notre Dame just inches shy of the first. You know, Jim, everybody falls in love with passing teams, but both these teams win by running the football. And Notre Dame in particular, when they get inside the 15-yard line, they are very tough because they take the approach as we can run the ball four times and always pick up the first down. Well, they come out, break the huddle with the wishbone now. Anthony Johnson's the fullback. The two tailbacks, Waters and Ismail. On third and inches. Anthony Johnson advanced it just a little, and I think it's enough for the first. <laughs> just, That's all he needed. Just a little is right. <laughs> they moved the chains. First down, Notre Dame. And here on defense, on Penn State defense, you have to decide what you're going to try to do. Are you going to try to stop Anthony Johnson inside with your nose tackle or your linebacker, Andre Collins? Or do you force Tony Rice to pitch the ball and hope you get support from the secondary to on the pitch? Waters breaks the tackle and gives Notre Dame the lead. Touchdown.
championship teams respond. This is a physical run by Ricky Waters. That's what they want. But it was a great block by the wide receiver, number 13 on the right of the screen, right there. Then Ricky set up Ricky Waters' touchdown. If, if Eilers doesn't make the block, Waters didn't get in. But it's the timing of these Notre Dame blocks, too, that is so impressive. Just when the guy makes the block, the running back is right there to make the cut off the block. 58-yard drive in six plays. And Hendrick on for the extra point attempt. to 10 Notre Dame. Ricky Waters breaking the tackle of Jim Dieter to get away from the line of scrimmage and take it on in for the go-ahead score. Ricky Waters, number 12, scoring from 12 yards out. And it's Notre Dame in front. Rivalry started here in 1913 at the old Beaver Field. In 1928, the series was shifted to Philadelphia because of the demand for tickets. And today, 86,000 plus at Beaver Stadium, the second largest crowd in Penn State history. To see number one, Notre Dame against Penn State. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery on a cold, wintry-like afternoon. But the action is hot. And Bobby Samuels is the return man, fielding it at the nine. Up the middle he goes. And a flag down on the field after the return to the 34-yard line. Sean Smith made the tackle, but a clip on the play will back up the Nittany Lions. So far in this game, total offense pretty even. In fact, Penn State's offense has driven it both times for a touchdown and a field goal. Rice, 67 yards rushing and the touchdown. Blair Thomas scoring the touchdown for Penn State. Bolkar in on five tackles. You know, the scoring so far has kind of surprised me. I really thought it would be a lower scoring game, certainly in the first half. But the also surprise has been Penn State's offense. They've shown a lot more life than they have the last couple of weeks. That has been the big surprise. Saka is four for five passing, but all of that in the first quarter when he had the win at his back. On first and ten, the give to Blair Thomas. And out to the 18-yard line. You know, Blair Thomas will make a lot of 30 and 40 and 50 yard runs for you, but I think what's most impressive about him are those kind of runs. The four and five and six yard runs inside from tackle to tackle when he runs right through guys. Got a Notre Dame defender down on the field. And it's Chris Zorich. Wow. I think it was maybe Ned Bolkar, number 47, who landed on top of Zorich right there on top of his shoulder. And again, that's going to happen when you have a defense that's flying around the football like Bolkar and Zorich and Alm and Dahl do. You're going to be running into your own guys from time to time. But Chris Zorich has had one sensational year at Nose Guard. Well, Pat, let's remind the folks we got a big week ahead. Thanksgiving weekend on Friday, college action. All kinds of Cotton Bowl implications in this game. Arkansas and Texas A&M. And then next Saturday, we have two games for you. Penn State against Pitt. And then later that day, let us be your ticket for Notre Dame against Miami. Zorich, back on his feet, was able to walk off to the sidelines under his own power. Replaced by Ridgely, second and four. Blair Thomas. They have been bumped forward about, about a yard short of the first. Bolkar and Andre Jones. Boy, did Andre Jones, number seven, come all the way from the weak side of the defense to make the play. Okay, you are seeing a lot of fired up guys today, including Andre Jones. Lined up on the weak side, ran all the way across the field to help with a tackle. That's the kind of day it is. It's going to be a 100% effort type of day. Now on third and one. Penn State shows its own wishbone. Pitching it to Thomas. Pursuit in the backfield. 
Smagala ran him down. Andre Jones had broken through there to force him even wider. Penn Boy. State will have to punt. Corner support, great corner support by Stan Smagala. He is up here. Now watch, he is just going to make the play right here. Smagala has been a guy that people try to test week in and week out, and every time he seems to make the play. Doug Helkowski, a 38-yard average into punt on fourth and five. Waters is the deep man on the return. A couple of short guys in front, and that's Steve Bellis, who was flanked by Pat Eilers, and Bellis makes the fair catch. Only a 30-yard punt into that wind. BYU looking good in the beehive boot. <laughs> And a lot of traditional rivalries today, playing for all sorts of awards and bells and apple cups and all sorts of stuff like that on traditional, a tra very traditional day in college football. What a great season for Duke and Steve Spurrier. Oh. Mm. Well, his, now his name linked yeah. to practically every job in America. Yep. But I'll tell you, he is an outstanding football coach. He may be coaching at five different places next year. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a new, new way of going about it. From the 48 of Penn State. Rice drops back, looking for Ismail, and he has him at the 32-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines with our man, John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim Nance, it's interesting to watch Tony Rice. You don't see any of these hand warmers or anything on Tony Rice. Before the game, he had one around his waist. Guys keeping their hands warm. But before the game, Tony Rice's attitude, how he presents himself as a winner is all important. He took it off, threw it away, as if to say, hey, the cold won't bother me today. Quickly, two for two passing is Rice. And again, good numbers for him on the ground. On the first down play, Ricky Waters into the secondary and tackled by Leonard Humphreys along with Brian Chismar. Boy, once again, the center, Mike Held, watch, watch, watch out the job that he does on Dieter. And again, if your running backs are going to have big holes like that, you need your offensive lineman, Dean Brown, number 71, really kind of does a job on his man. But Mike Held, the center, cleared Dieter all the way three yards to the left that made the big hole for Ricky Waters. A nine-yard gain, second and one from the 23. Anthony Johnson has the first down to the 17-yard line. Notre Dame has had a remarkable year running the ball even better today and that's even when defenses know they're going to run the football and today they are facing one of the nation's best defense the best scoring defense in all of America with Penn State well the most points scored on Penn State 17 by Alabama and Notre Dame is going in right now trying to top that figure here in the first half Rice on first down to the 10 yard line and a gain of seven well, did you see the way Rice hugged his blocks by his backs? Both Anthony Johnson and Ricky Waters were there blocking, and Rice just kind of hugged those. Terrific timing as he just cuts off that those blocks and picks up about seven. You know, all these, these guys, these runners at Notre Dame just seem to have a, a nice sense, a feel for the game of football. Second and three. Tackled at the five by Leonard Humphreys. Had he been able to dodge Humphreys, it would have been another touchdown for Waters. But he has the first down. First and goal from the five. You know, clever formations that Notre Dame is using. They're using a lot of slot formation, two receivers to a side, to prevent Penn State from getting into an eight-man defensive front to stop the run. Rod West, the extra tight end, comes in. Ismail drops back into the backfield. On first down, Anthony Johnson gets halfway there. Here's a man who has 31 rushing touchdowns on his career, including 10 this season. 
Lots of guys squeeze yards, Jim, different ways. He, I think he squeezes extra yardage just out of his body lean, the way he carries the ball, leaning forward all the time. Eilers now comes in as a tailback out of the wishbone on second and goal. Anthony Johnson to the one. Again, with a four-point lead, I think Lou Holtz is thinking two runs. Take two shots at getting the ball into the end zone. His offensive line is playing extremely well. He's got a fullback is running. And Joe Paterno is looking for a negative play out of his defense. We need we need Jeter or Giannetti or Schoenwolf to give us some penetration on defense. Ismail brings in the play and is set to the right. Notre Dame lines up out of the eye. Johnson and Waters on third and goal. Anthony Johnson, did he break the plane? No. Third straight run with Anthony Johnson. And he's inches shy. Lou Holtz is thinking touchdown all the way here. Now again, they have four different ways of getting this ball. It's fourth and goal. Penn State stopped Alabama just before the half in the same situation three weeks ago. Anthony Johnson, touchdown Notre Dame. on the extra point try. Rush coming through there, but the kick is good. This drive and this touchdown was set up by the center, Mike Health, and his offensive lineman, and the running and blocking of the fullback, Anthony Johnson. He crosses the plane, and that's a Notre Dame score. Those words were penned by sports writer Grantlin Rice following Notre Dame's game with Army in 1924. Not only did Rice's writing immortalize this brilliant backfield, but led to an amazing accomplishment. The Four Horsemen are the only entire backfield in college football history to gain membership in the Hall of Fame. This is Brian Musburger recalling the great traditions of college football.